And welcome to Sanford Flip Math. This is Precalculus. We are continuing our work with exponential and logarithmic functions, uh, specifically on logarithms. This is Precalculus. Uh, we're working from the Demana Waits Foley Kennedy book, uh, fourth or fifth edition, depending on which copy you have. And uh, really, the focus today uh, for this video is really going to be on. Uh, graphing log functions, and uh, so uh, we're talking about graphing stuff that looks like this. And uh, remember that uh, uh, for anything ba that we're talking about with uh, log functions or even exponential functions, remember the base has to be greater than 1. The base cannot be, I'm sorry, it has to be greater than 0. It cannot be 1. Uh, so uh, those are kind of the conditions on this. And we did a little bit of this in the last video. Uh, but I need to spend a little bit more time so we're real clear on domain and range issues and then we'll do a few transformations and we got to be able to sketch this kind of stuff on our own uh, without the calculator. Okay, we will make some connections to the calculator but, but uh, really this needs to be able to be done without the calculator. Okay, all right, so uh, let's look at a specific example like uh, log base 2 of x. Okay, and uh, this is probably kind of what we did before um, but the idea again is uh, that I, I, I want to be able to talk about domain range, uh, any asymptotes, um, any weirdness going on in this function, and uh, I also want to kind of, uh, we need to kind of point out uh, any intercepts, okay? And, and then we need to be able to move things around, okay? So I think what I did last time was I kind of switched this into exponential form. Uh, and mainly the, the issue is it's, it's harder to see, remember logs are exponents, and it's harder to see uh, what the exponent's going to be if you don't have a nice cute power of 2. So I kind of cheat. Uh, the base is 2. Uh, the exponent is the answer for the log. Remember that logs are exponents and uh, should be equal to x. And so I'm going to make a little table of values, and then we will sketch, and uh, we'll go from there. Okay? So since this is solved for x, what I'm going to do is put in y values, and I'll just put in a few, uh, like negative 1, 0, 1. And again, I'm putting in y values because it's easier to make those calculations. Okay? So, like for instance, um, 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. 2 to the 0 is 1. And 2 to the 1 is, you guessed it, 2. And so if I do a little, um, I'm make a little graph over here. Okay, and so uh, one, two, three, four, I'll do that. Okay, so uh, one half and negative one, so that would look somewhere around here. Uh, two, I'm sorry, one and zero, and two and one looks like this. Now, what I want to do for just a second is entertain the possibility of what if I wanted to make this work for x equals 0? Okay, so what that would mean is I'd have to have 2 to the y equals 0. So the question is, 2 to what power is 0? Well, 2 to the 0 power, we already said, was 1. So, as I like to say, that ain't it. Um, so what do you do to make x equals 0 happen, what do you do to make 2 to some power equal 0? Well, you can't. Okay, so uh, this does not exist, or uh, maybe it's undefined, but the idea is I can't do 2 to a power and get an answer of 0. It's just impossible. <coughs> so what that also means for me is that as I'm drawing this graph, I'm never actually going to get to 0 for x. Okay? Now, I could put y values in all day to make me get closer. So, for instance, if I put in, um, let's say, negative 100, then this will be 1 over 2 to the 100th, because it's going to be a negative exponent means reciprocal. So, that means as I get really, really close to the, uh, the y-axis, the y-value goes farther down. Okay. So, the point in all of that is that the x, I'm sorry, the y-axis the y-axis, x equals 0, is an asymptote. It's a vertical asymptote. Okay. The other thing I want you to see on this is the only intercept I have is not a y-intercept, it's an x-intercept. So it is at 1, 0, or you could say uh, x-intercept uh, equals 1. Okay. 
the domain then is really only the stuff that's to the right of zero. Those are the only x values that I see graphed there. Okay, so the do domain is x greater than zero. And the range, well, it, the range looks like it's everything from top to bottom because eventually I'm going to get to it all. Okay, so the range is all real numbers. Okay, well, let's do this again. Okay, I want to do the same kind of thing, only this time I want to do um, ln of x. Now, I know you're freaking out going, ah, ln. What's that? Okay, so just a reminder that this is log base e of x. I'm going to do the same thing, domain, range, asymptotes. Uh, what else did I do? Intercepts. Okay, and we'll do a graph. Okay, now what I want you to do, remembering that e is a number, okay, so e is 2.718. It is on your calculator. Uh, let me uh, actually just kind of draw your attention to it. Um, it is right here above the division key, so you have to hit second and E, or there's also another version of E uh, right here on the LN button, the natural log button, uh, that says E to the X, uh, the one above the division key says just E, okay? So note to self that uh, it's on the calculator, so you can actually do those calculations yourself uh, with the calculator, but I I'm really not gonna do that here, I'm just gonna kinda wing it. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is just stop, uh, stop the video for a second, pause the video, and then you do the whole thing, what I just did, and then you can check yourself in just a second, okay? Stop. Yeah, I felt like Dora right there, that was kinda cool. All right, so I'm not gonna answer any questions until I do a little graphing. And in order to do the graphing, I'm going to take this and make this into exponential form. So the base is e. The thing on the other side of the equal sign from the log is y equals x. So we'll make a little table of values. And again, I'm going to use negative 1, 0, 1. And again, I'm filling in the y's because this thing says x equals. And I, so that, whoop, hello, don't take all that away. Okay, cool. Um, so I'm going to fill in the y values uh, and just a few of them. Okay, so e to the negative 1 is 1 over e. Well, remember, if e is about 2-ish, so that's kind of like about somewhere between 1 half and 1 third, okay? So, it, I don't know, it, it might be 0.4-ish. I don't know, I'm not really worried about that. I just, because I'm going to ballpark where the point is. Okay, e to the 0. Yep, anything to the 0 is 1, except for 0 to the 0. And e to the 1 is e, uh, which is about 2.7, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so that number again. Okay, so let's do some graphing. Okay, all right, so here we go. Um, the x value 1 over e, as I said, is it's a little less than a half, and I need to go down to negative 1, so about there. 1, 0. And then... Uh, E, which is 2.7-ish, uh, I need to go up to 1. Okay, and oh, that graph. Now, don't, don't, don't make your graph do this. That's not it. Okay, it needs to start hugging along the y-axis. Now, just a reminder, you can actually graph this in your calculator right now. In fact, let's, let's do it. Okay, so y equals, uh, I'm going to do ln, it's uh, two up, buttons up from the log key, or from the on key, sorry, uh, log of x, and I'm on a standard screen, <clears throat> and there it is. Now, the problem with this is, remember, the calculator is not a perfect tool, and it looks like it stops right there. In fact, if you start tracing on here, zero, obviously, y equals nothing, okay, and if I go one little click to the right, it's like the graph just starts there, and it doesn't keep going down. Now, again, I, and I mentioned this on the uh, 3.3a video, that this is really supposed to keep going down alongside, and it gets closer and closer and closer to the y-axis, but it, it's never going to actually hit it. Okay, So I need you to be aware of that, because if you're on a test, and I see you draw your little graph like this, I'm going to be like, yep, yeah, bummer for you. Okay, so I need you to understand that that keeps going down forever, and the, you're going to have to show that somehow.
Okay, so please uh, be aware of that because I don't want any tears. I, I'd rather you just be in the know. Okay, all right, let's answer these questions. Domain, well, looks to me like it's stuff to the right of the y-axis, so x greater than zero. Range looks like all reals to me. Asymptote, x equals zero, also known as the y-axis. And intercept looks like one zero again. So just a little comparison. Okay, that's this is the stuff we got just a minute ago with that graph. And I got a whole different base now. And it looks pretty much the same. Okay, so understand that the curvature of this thing changes a little bit. You know, it might be, uh, you know, on, on a different base, maybe it's uh, more like, maybe like that. You know, and then on, a, on yet another base, maybe it's more like this. Okay, it just depends. The higher the base, the, the sharper the corner. Bigger base. Sorry, that's supposed to be an S, not a C. But I just do that. <laughs> well, I really hate when that does that. It just kind of went back to whatever I did before. Bigger base, sharper turn, sharper corner. Okay. All right. I want to just do uh, one more of these, and I'm going to go quick. Uh, it, it, and then uh, we'll do some transformations. Okay. I want to do y equals log base one half. Yeah, I hate diagonal fraction bars. Sorry, base one half of x. Okay, so again, this would be a great place to pause. I'm going to ask the same questions: domain, range, asymptotes, um, intercepts. Okay, and then we're going to do a little sketch. Okay, so if you haven't already paused, pause now, do everything, and then come back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is change this into the base is 1 half, the exponent is y, and x is my answer. I'm going to use the same x, uh, y values. Again, it's easier to put in y values for these. Okay, so 1 half to the negative 1. Well, 1 half to the negative 1 is the reciprocal of 1 half, which is 2. 1 half to the 0 is 1. 1 half to the 1 is 1 half. Okay, so I'm going to plot those points. Uh, let me give myself a little bit of a scale here. Okay, so 2, negative 1, 1, 0, and 1, half, 1. Something like that. Okay, now, worth noting, I'm going to pop all the way back to the first one I did. Now, this is, this, the screen currently has one uh, log base 1, half. This has log base 2. Notice that this one goes this way. Okay, come on. And this one goes the other way. Hmm. Yes, that's because of that fraction. So if the base is between 0 and 1, then it's going to be that direction. <clears throat> if the base is bigger than 1, it's going to go like that. Okay, I guess it'd be nice to have a little set of axes on here. Something like that. All right, so let's answer our questions again. Okay, domain is still to the right of the y-axis. The range is still all real numbers. It's just everything's upside down. Asymptote's still the y-axis. And the intercept's still at 1, 0. Okay, so I want to go all the way back to the very first one that we wrote down. Not that one. Oh, man, I went way, way back there. Yeah, oh, okay, I'm good. Okay, so quick notes here. Okay, this is, in general, domain, x greater than 0. Range, all real numbers. The y intercept, or the x-intercept, is 1, 0. And uh, what else did I ask? Oh, asymptote, sorry. x equals 0. This is going to be true for any of these unless you start doing transformations on them, like sliding things around, okay? And that's the last thing we're going to do. So we'll do like one or two of those, and then uh, then we'll be done with this bad boy, okay? All right. So 
quick little note here. Uh, I'm going to treat log base 2 of x as my parent function. Okay, and so I'm just going to write, I'm just going to magically have some stuff. Okay, so that's all of our starting information for the parent function. Okay. Okay, so what we're going to do is compare that, uh, compare this new equation and all of its information to what we already started with. Okay, so let's just get a little quick sketch of our original function here. Okay, so again, uh, it goes through 1, 0. Uh, log base uh, 2 of 2 is going to be 1, and that's negative 1. And again, this is the parent function. Okay, all right, so that is log base 2 of x, okay? Well, this 3 is on the outside. This minus 1 is on the inside, so I have to do inverse. So there is a shift right of 1. Got to do vertical stretches first, any stretches first, okay? So we'll, we'll start with that. Now, all that means is, like, this y value was 1. It's now going to be 3, this y value was 0, it's now 0. This y value, this other y value, uh, was negative 1, it's negative 3 for that same x value. Okay, so it's much steeper stretched, but it's the same idea. Okay, and then the other thing I need to do here is shift the whole thing to the right one, so this point moves to the right one. This point up here moves to the right one. This point down here moves to the right. 1. Okay, so again, same pattern now. It's just shifted to the right 1. Okay, so the domain was x greater than 0. Well, it shifted to the right 1 also, so it's x greater than 1. The asymptote, you guessed it, x equals 1. There's that connection again, like, kind of like back in chapter 1. The range was all real numbers from negative infinity to infinity. Well, now that's times 3, so it's 3 times infinity. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. So the, the range is all real numbers still. The intercept was 1, 0. Well, the y value was multiplied by 3, and then it was shifted right 1. There it is, and there it is. Okay. All right, so you should be able to do the same kind of transformations that we have been doing. It's just now things are going to slide around on it for a log function instead of uh, something else, okay? Uh, one last little freebie, and uh, we did this in class, so if you're good with this, then you can move on. Um, if you have b to the log base b of m, okay, so a quick example might be if I have uh, 3 to the log base 3 of 15, uh, the way we've been, we handled this was uh, we set this equal to x for a minute just to be able to play around with this. I have a base to an exponent equaling an answer. So if I change this to log form, and I know I'm going fast because I'm throwing this in. If, if I change this to log form, I'm going to do log base 3 of the answer equals the exponent. And then based on position, you should be able to identify at this point that x is equal to 15. So the answer here was 15. Okay, same logic, log base b of the answer, I'll call it x, equals the exponent. Well, again, based on position, I'm going to be able to say that x equals m. So in other words, this whole thing, log base b, I'm sorry, b to the, now, and again, the context is that if I have some exponent, b was raised to an exponent to make m. If I take, so b was raised to an exponent to get m. If I take this b, and raise it to that same exponent, I ought to get m. Okay, and I know that seems very circular. If you listen to it a few times, it will actually start making sense, I hope. All right, so I'm out, and uh, thanks for having me, and uh, later. Bye.